friends, my name is Panindra Gupta. So in this video, let us discuss about connective tissue. So what is meant by connective tissue? So this connective tissue is mainly present between the other tissues throughout the body parts. For example, if you take CNS, that is nothing but central nervous system. Normally our outer membrane of central nervous system consists of meninges. There are three types of matters which can be which are present in these meninges. What are that matters? Dura matter, organoid matter and pia matter. So, these three are the meninges which can, which can be seen in the outer membrane of central nervous system. So between these three meninges, there is a presence of connective tissue. Okay. So this connective tissue is mainly present between this dura matter, arganoid matter and pia matter which can be seen in the outer membrane of the central nervous system. So not only the central nervous system, this connective tissue is also seen in spinal cord. So this connective tissue is, can be seen in spinal cord as well as the central nervous system also. And this set, connective tissue consists of three main components first one is fibers second one is ground substance third one is cells what is meant by fibers fibers are nothing but there are two types elastic fibers collagen fibers so normally these elastic fibers are yellow in color so it is also known as yellow fibers if you see my previous videos i have explained you there what is meant by yellow fibers and what is meant by uh, elastic fibers or which are known as yellow fibers and collagen fibers Normally this collagen fibers will be in white and bluish white in color and this elastic fibers will be yellow in color. Coming to the second one ground substance. Ground substance is nothing but it is a extracellular matrix which is mainly present in a tissue and within that matrix there is a presence of cells. So cells are mainly present in the matrix which is said to be as ground substance. Okay and connective tissue also contains fibroblasts, adipocytes macrophages, mast cells, leukocytes. So what is meant by fibroblasts? Fibroblasts is nothing but, I have said you in the here, fibers. So fibroblasts are nothing but, it consists of fibers and this type of fibers, there are two types, elastic fibers and collagen fibers. Elastic fibers are also known as yellow fibers, I have said you in my previous video. And that elastic fibers are also known as yellow fibers because the elastic fibers are in the color of yellow. So it is also known as yellow fibers. Whereas collagen fibers is in the color of white. And that's, that's nothing but fibroblasts. Coming to the adipocytes, the name itself indicates sites. Sites means cells. Sites means cells. So the fat cells which is mainly present in the adipose tissue are is known is known as adipocytes. Okay? Are known as adipocytes, is plural. Are known as adipocytes. So coming to the third one, macrophages. So macrophages, what do you mean by macrophages? Macrophages, it is a type of uh, white blood cells, WBC, it is a type of white blood cells and these macrophages are mainly seen in our immune system in the, in the immune system of our body not only in humans but also in the animals also okay and it helps in digestion of foreign materials so what, what is meant by this foreign materials? foreign materials is nothing but uh, for example if you take microorganisms which attack to our body so these macrophages which are mainly present in this in, in the immune system will help in the digestion of that foreign material which attack to our human body. What is meant by foreign material here? Foreign material is nothing but a microorganisms which enter into our human body or else which attack to our human body. So coming to the uh, fourth one, mast cells. So hope you understand what is meant by macrophages. Macrophages is nothing but it is a type of WBC cells which is mainly present in the immune system. So what is the main function of this macrophages is nothing but uh, it helps in the digestion of foreign materials like microorganisms okay so coming to the fourth one mast cells so what do we mean by mast cells mast cells it consists of granules and these granules are mainly rich in histamine and heparin so coming to the fifth one leukocytes and leukocytes there is nothing to say about leukocytes the, the other name of leukocytes is white blood cells wbc okay so all of you know about wbc what what is the main function of the wbc it, it mainly helps in the protection of our body from infections or else from the infectious species okay so that's the main function of this leukocytes so this, these are the uh, informations which is provided from fibroblasts, adipocytes, macrophages, muscles and leukocytes so coming to the classification this connective tissue is classified into two types loose connective tissue and second one is dense connective tissue so now let us learn about loose connective tissue and coming to the first one loose connective tissue and the, in this loose connective tissue, the cells and fibers are loosely arranged within the tissue. So within the tissue, the cells and fibers are loosely arranged, whether it may be mast cells or else uh, adipocytes, etc. or else uh, 
if you if you see the case of fibers or if you take collagen fibers or elastic fibers and all of that all of these things will be loosely arranged within the tissue so when these are loosely arranged then it is said to be as loose connective tissue and coming to the classification of this loose connective tissue it is classified into three types areolar tissue adipose tissue reticular tissue and now let us discuss about areolar tissue so now let us discuss about areolar tissue uh, which comes under the classification of loose connective tissue so normally i have said to you that loose connective tissue is normally classified into three tissues areolar tissue adipose tissue and reticular tissue so now let us discuss about areolar tissue so normally this areolar tissue it is one of the most uh, distributed connective tissue which can be seen in our human body so it is one of the most widely distributed connective tissue which can be seen in our human body and it forms the packing tissue in in almost all the organs organs is nothing but body parts right and why it is said to be as packing tissue because all of these if you see your fibroblast mast cells macrophages adipocytes plasma cells uh, will be together and mainly forms like a pack and this pack will be present in the tissue right so it is said to be as a packing tissue so it is said to be as packing tissue so coming to here i have said you these are the five contents which are mainly present in this tissue so if you see your fibroblasts uh, i have said you in the i have said you before fibroblast is nothing but it secretes fibers uh, it regulates the fibers uh, what whatever fibers collagen fibers elastic fibers uh, in that way uh, along with this collagen fibers and elastic fibers uh, reticular fibers will also be produced and normally i have said you elastic fibers is in the yellow in color and collagen fibers is in white in color and if you see your mast cells it helps in the secretion of uh, heparin not only heparin histamine and along with this bradykinin and serotonin has also been excreted has also been secreted and next third one is macrophages so i have said you this macrophages are nothing but it is a type of white blood cells which are mainly present in the immune system so what is the main function of this macrophages it, it acts as internal scavengers so what is meant by this internal scavengers is nothing but uh, it helps in the it helps in digestion of foreign materials such as microorganisms which attack our human body and coming to this adipocytes these are fat cells the name itself indicates sites means cells and the fat cells which are mainly present in the adipose tissue is said to be as adipocytes and the plasma cells uh, which are mainly composed within the lymphocytes and helps in the production of antibodies okay so this is the structure of the areolar tissue if you see this is the structure of the areolar tissue okay wait a second and if you see in this areolar tissue uh this is a, a all of the cells are loosely connected right all of these are loosely connected hence it is a diverse loose connective tissue and within this if you see here in this diagram this this is known as macrophages and these are the adipocytes and here this is known as black color one which i have drawn is known as elastic fibers okay elastic fibers and this blue color one which consists of this uh sorry i have forgot to mention here this red color one which i have drawn this red colors red color structure which i have drawn are known as collagen fibers normally the collagen fibers will be white in color and this elastic fibers will be this elastic fibers will be in yellow in color which is also known as yellow fibers but i don't have that marker so i have drawn with black color and this i have drawn with white uh, red color normally this collagen fibers are white in color so here i can't draw in white in color because the body is in black, white in color itself so i can't draw here white color so normally i have drawn with red color so this red color one which i have drawn is are known as collagen fibers and this blue color one which connects this collagen fibers is known as fibroblast is known as fibroblast and this is the mast cell so all has been covered over here right fibroblast this is a fibroblast mast cell this is the mast cell and macrophages macrophages this is the macrophage and adipocytes so these are the adipocytes plasma cells plasma cells you cannot see the plasma cells over here but if you see if you use microscope with Uh, 4000x zoom then only you can observe plasma cells because it is very minute and uh, normally these plasma cells it is it, uh, it helps in the, it it can be seen in the immune system i have said you before and if you see my previous videos i explained you about b lymphocytes okay so if you see here within this diagram uh, only one thing you have to learn is all of these parts all of these fibroblast mast cells and macrophages and adipocytes which i have said you here all of these are arranged loosely if you see how all these are arranged loosely so it is it comes under the classification of loose connective tissue so this is a diagram of loose uh, uh, areolar tissue so now let us discuss about adipose tissue 
and now let us discuss about adipose tissue which comes under the second classification of loose connective tissue okay and coming to this adipose tissue and it acts as a fat storage so it is a specialized tissue which mainly helps in the function of fat storage so the fat content will be stored in this adipose tissue and this adipose tissue consists of adipocytes in before now only i have explained you right what is meant by adipocytes uh, normally the cells which are mainly present in this adipose tissue are, are known as adipocytes okay uh, which cells fat cells fat cells which are mainly present in the adipose tissue are known as adipocytes coming to this uh, third one it also consists of fibers but only less amount of fibers are present uh, the, which fiber which type of fibers collagen fibers and elastic fibers uh, only it is mainly present in the less amount okay these fibers are mainly present in the less amount and this adipose tissue is found beneath the skin which mainly helps uh, in thermal insulation so this adipose tissue is found beneath the skin which helps in thermal insulation and this thermal, uh, thermal insulation is a process where the help which, which helps in the reduction of heat okay and coming to this last one uh, it uh, it forms blubber in aquatic aquatic animals uh, aquatic animals is nothing but if you take shark and if you cut the shark laterally or ventrally then the then you can observe the fat content which is red in color or else which is brown in color so that fat content is nothing but adipose tissue that fat content is nothing but adipose tissue and aquatic animals such as shark and you can also see it in hump of camels so if you see this picture it, you can also see in hump of camels so if you cut that hump then you can find the adipose tissue okay so this is the structure of this adipose tissue and here this is a nucleus and the the central part is known as fat storage and the blue color portal which i have drawn is known as plasma membrane okay so here here the fat will be stored and and uh, the people who eat fish is uh, normally they will eat only the fat content itself and some will eat muscles also but normally fish doesn't consist of muscles it's normally it consists of muscles in less content itself uh, but uh, more content will be in fat itself okay so normally the people who eat fish uh, they normally consume adipose tissue which is mainly present in that shark that's nothing but blubber okay so now let us learn about reticular tissue and i forgot to say you two points that uh, this adipose tissue which is mainly present uh, which comes under the classification of the connective tissue it acts as shock absorber so it acts as shock absorber in the region of palms and soles so if you take in your hands if you shock if you get a shock then this adipose tissue mainly helps in that absorbing of that shock in our palms and also in the soles so coming to this classification normally this adipose tissue are also classified into two types that is brown adipose tissue and white adipose tissue so now let us discuss about reticular tissue so now let us discuss about reticular tissue so reticular tissue consists of reticular cells so what is mean by reticular cells reticular cells is nothing but it is a type of fibroblast uh, which mainly helps in the synthesis of collagen fibers for example if you take collagen alpha 1 it helps in the synthesis of this collagen alpha 1 and it mainly produce reticular fibers okay so this reticular cells helps in the production of reticular fibers okay by synthesis by the synthesization of collagen alpha 1 okay and normally this collagen fibers if you see here i have written here supporting framework why i have written supporting framework because this reticular tissue mainly forms the supporting framework for the lymphoid organs for the lymphoid organs so what are the lymphoid organs bone marrow spleen lymph nodes so these are the lymphoid organs so if you see here this reticular tissue mainly forms the supporting framework of lymphoid organs such as bone marrow spleen and lymph nodes and this all of these three get will get together and mainly forms a reticular lamina so what is mean by this reticular lamina reticular lamina is nothing but it can be seen below the base membrane layer for example if you take our skin human skin normally our human skin consists of epidermis right so below that epidermis there is a presence of basement membrane so within the base membrane you can see this reticular lamina okay so this bone marrow spleen lymph nodes Uh, which are which, which are these lymphoid organs will get together and mainly forms a reticular lamina which is mainly present below the basement membrane so this is about the reticular tissue so now let us discuss about dense connective tissue up to now up to now these three are these three are classified under loose connective tissue so now let us discuss about the dense connective tissue so now let us learn about dense connective tissue and this dense connective tissue 
is a tissue which consists of more amount of fibers but, le but less amount of cells. So why it, is, why it consists of less amount of cells because the name itself indicates that it is a dense connective tissue. There is nothing but all of these fibers, uh, only fibers will be present but cells will not be present because uh, if more amount of cells will be present then it comes under loose connective tissue so which, which are loosely arranged but here all of them are tightly arranged so uh, for, for the nature of tightly arranging uh, the fiber should be present but cells should not be present so only more amount of fibers are present which type of fibers collagen fibers and elastic fibers are present uh, which I will explain you in this classification so and let's ground substance is present what I have what is mean by ground substance I have explained you just now what is mean by ground substance ground substance is nothing but it is a extracellular matrix which is mainly present within the tissue and this dense connective tissue is classified into three types dense regular connective tissue dense irregular connective tissue elastic connective tissue so now let us learn about the dense regular connective tissue and this dense regular connective tissue uh, it consists of collagen fibers and the collagen fibers are arranged parallelly are arranged parallelly so this symbol is parallel okay so these are arranged parallelly to one another and it mainly forms a bundle it mainly forms a bundle and the best example for this dense regular connective tissue is tendons ligaments so uh, so normally this, this dense regular connective tissue consists of collagen fibers and that collagen fibers which are mainly present in this tissue are arranged parallelly to one another as they are arranged parallelly I mean in this way they, are, they will get arranged in a parallel way all of you know what is maybe parallel right okay and this parallel way and as they are arranged in a parallel way it mainly forms as a bundle and the best example for this dense connective tissue is tendons and ligaments and coming to the second one dense irregular connective tissue and in the dense irregular, irregular connective tissue also it consists of collagen fibers and the collagen fibers which are mainly present in this tissue are irregularly arranged but if you see in this first case dense regular connective tissue this collagen fibers are arranged regularly there is nothing but these are arranged parallelly all, all the collagen fibers will arrange it parallelly so you, so we can say it is regular connective tissue so I will draw you a diagram later after this so if you see in the dense regular connective tissue the collagen fibers are irregularly arranged and the best example is periosteum, endosteum, pericardium, heart valves and coming to the third one elastic tissue and this elastic tissue uh, normally consists of elastic fibers uh, there is nothing to draw in this diagram I will, I will show you the diagrams of this uh, dense regular connective tissue and dense irregular connective tissue I will not show this elastic connective tissue because uh, all of us know elastic connective tissue I have explained you just now in loose connective tissue also about elastic tissues uh, there is nothing but in elastic fibers nothing but it is also known as yellow fibers because uh, the color property which is mainly present in these fibers is yellow in color so these are also known as yellow fibers and these yellow fibers are elastic in nature so due to that elasticity they can also expand right due to that elasticity they can also expand that's nothing but it can act as a considerable extension and the best example for this uh, elastic connective tissue is uh, walls of arteries in our heart okay and the vocal cords trachea bronchi and elastic ligaments uh, which you can see in between the uh, vertebral column okay and these are the best examples for this elastic connective tissue so now I will show you the diagrams of dense regular connective tissue and dense irregular connective tissue so if you see in these diagrams this, is, this one is a dense regular connective tissue and this is the dense irregular connective tissue so if you see in the case of dense regular connective tissue what I have said you here there is a presence of collagen fibers and the collagen fibers are arranged parallelly to one another in the bundles so if you see here this all of this red color one are the collagen fibers so how these are arranged these are arranged parallelly see I have written here parallel all of these collagen fibers are arranged parallelly and mainly forms a bundle and mainly forms a bundle and this is known as dense regular connective tissue so these are arranged regularly right but in the case of dense irregular connective tissue all of these all of these collagen fibers and this red color one is known as collagen fibers and these are known as cells before I have said you that there are more amount of collagen fibers and less amount of cells right and these collagen fibers are in the more amount and which are irregularly arranged so it is named as dense irregular connective tissue so thank you for watching this video guys if you like this video please do like and subscribe and if you have any doubts regarding this video please comment in the comment box thank you